What's up guys, I'm Pause Build, and today I'm going to show you how to get started in Planet Zoo. Planet Zoo is a game about buying, looking after and breeding exotic animals in your very own zoo. First let's look at the camera controls. To move around, use the W, S, A and D keys. You can also use the E key to move up and the Q key to move down. Holding down the right mouse button will allow you to scroll right and left. Holding down the mouse wheel will allow you to rotate the camera and tilt at different angles. Scrolling the mouse wheel will allow you to zoom in and out. Now to see all the animals you can get in the game, look at your Zoopedia in the top left. Here you'll find descriptions of all of the animals and their requirements, so you know exactly how to make your habitats. We're going to choose a Nile monitor to be the first animal in our zoo because they're quite exciting for a very low feeding cost. Animals like lions and tigers are very cool, but they cost a lot to feed for a young zoo. If you click the Natural Habitat tab, you'll be able to see all of the requirements your animal has for their habitat. Here you can see this animal doesn't have any climbing or deep water requirements, but it does have a land requirement, water requirement, temperature requirement and boundary requirement. Now in order to get guests to your animals, you're going to need paths. Paths can be selected in the bottom right tab and you can choose the type of path you want from quite a nice selection. Once you've found one you like, simply move it onto the map and you'll see it appear. You can adjust the length of the path and the width of the path like this. Left click to place paths. If you wish to build in a straight line, you might consider enabling angle snap. This will snap your paths to a specified degree every time you place them. For our starting layout, we're going to build 3 meters out on either side. And then 10 meters down and join it up. We're also going to build a path at the 4 meter line. Now unless you want your animals to escape, you're going to need some barriers for your habitats. If you click the barriers button at the bottom of the screen, you'll see all of the barriers available to you alongside the gates that your staff will use to access the habitats. Placing a gate first can be helpful in order to make sure that the barrier is the right distance away from the path. Here you can also turn off angle snap to get a more fluid movement. You can also adjust the length of the barrier. Glass barriers can be curved while the wooden log barriers can't, but a sneaky trick is, if you place the glass barrier first, you can then change it to the wooden log barrier. In order to change it, simply click the barrier and then select the barrier type you'd like instead. If you make any mistakes, you can always click the undo and redo buttons at the bottom of the screen. But remember, you only get 49 undos. Now I like my barriers to look a little bit different, so I'm going to put some curves in this one. Remember we need to make this habitat big enough to meet the minimum requirements of our Nile monitors. And now I'm just going to finish joining up this barrier. If you want to select more than one barrier, simply drag the arrow tool across all the barriers you wish to select. You can also move all barriers by selecting the Move icon. If you want to select all of the barriers, click the circle icon. 
You can adjust the height of your barriers by clicking the up and down arrow icon. This can be done in fixed increments using height snap, or can be done freely if you disable it. Now that we're happy with the barrier, I like to edit the terrain of my habitats to make them a little bit more interesting. If you click on your habitat and then select the terrain icon, you can see the land area, water area and average water depth of your habitat. To modify the terrain, select the terrain tool at the bottom right hand side of the screen. Here you can adjust the size and intensity of the changes you want to make. Using the pull tool, we can pull the land up in the specified area. I'm going to use the smooth tool to smooth this little hill out a bit. You can also undo any mistakes you make. I'm going to use the push tool to make a water area for our Nile monitors, and then use the water tab to place water. You'll notice that you can only place it in certain locations, depending on the line of the terrain. Now when I click the terrain tab, you can see that these variables have changed, and these are definitely suitable for our Nile monitors. You can use the chisel tool to rough up a terrain and make it look a little bit more natural. Now in order to buy our animals, we're going to need some staff facilities. In the facilities tab, you can select staff facilities and see all of the facilities available to you for your staff. We're going to need a veterinary surgery for any sick animals we have. Unfortunately, your staff buildings have a negative impact on your guests, so you need to place them far enough away from your paths so that the guests aren't annoyed by them. If you click the heat map at the bottom left hand side of the screen, you can select negative impact on guests at the top and see the area that you need to keep guests away from. Once one building is placed, all other buildings will align to the grid. You're also going to need a quarantine to place your animals in when they arrive. and a staff building to let your staff relax. Now because I've chosen a water animal, we're going to need water treatment facilities. This building is going to demand money, but I think it's worth it because it gives us some really nice looking habitats. You can press the Z key to rotate your buildings. Now unfortunately the water maintenance facility has quite a large negative impact radius. We're going to need to adjust the grid size on the bottom right and place it so the radius stays within our square. Your keeper hut is used by your keepers to pick up all the animal food before they take it to the habitat. The Animal Trade Centre is the building that enables you to buy and sell animals. The Research Centre enables your vets to do research and the workshop enables your mechanics to do research. Vet research is focused on your animals and will give you new food items and enrichment. Mechanical research will give you a number of things from decoration pieces to new facilities. I'm going to join the path between these buildings to create a small staff area. I'll cover this later with decoration, but for now, decoration isn't as important as making money. Now let's start buying our animals. Once you have the Animal Trade Center, you're able to buy habitat animals by selecting the Animal Trading tab. Here you can see all the animals available for purchase. You can filter these by selecting the Filters tab and select only the animals you want to see. Here we have two Nile monitors, a male and a female. We can buy these with conservation credits, which as you can see we have 300 when we start the game. This is preferable to buying with money in the early stages as money can be a little bit tight. 
You can see the genetics of our animal here, which is important for breeding, and also the overall appeal of the animal. On the right you can see the sex and the age of the animal. You can buy the animal by clicking the adopt button. Now the animals will appear in our animal storage tab. If you wish to move them to the zoo, select them both, click send to zoo, and then select the location you wish to move them to. In this case, we're going to select our quarantine building, as we want to make sure that they're not sick or injured before they enter the zoo. Now in order to move these animals, you're going to need some staff. To hire staff, select the zoo tab in the bottom left hand side of the screen, and then select staff. Here you'll be presented with a list of all of your staff. You can hire staff by clicking their icon at the bottom of this page, and then clicking in your zoo where you'd like to place them. I'd recommend that you get a keeper, a mechanic, a vet, and a caretaker to start your zoo. Keepers are in charge of cleaning your habitats and feeding your animals. Mechanics are in charge of fixing your barriers and utilities. Vets are in charge of healing your animals. And caretakers are in charge of keeping your zoo clean. Once you've hired staff, you can easily see their salaries, the work zone they're assigned to, and their training level. Unfortunately, you have to wait a little while before you can train them up. You can also rename your staff. Work zones are a great way to organize the work that your staff are gonna do in your zoos. To create a work zone tab, select add new work zone. Now select all the buildings you wish to include in this work zone. I'm making a work zone for our vets first, so they're gonna need access to our habitat, our veterinary surgery, our quarantine, our staff building, and the research center. You can see the building selected in the right hand side. You can also name your work zones, so I'm going to call this one VET. Now I'm going to create a mechanic work zone by selecting the workshop, water pump, staff building and habitat. For our keeper work zone, I'm going to select the animal trade centre, the keeper hut, the quarantine, the staff building and the habitat. I'm also going to make a work zone that includes all buildings and habitats we have, including the entrance gates. This work zone is going to be called Zoo and I'm going to assign my caretakers and eventually my security guards to this one. Caretakers and security guards patrol the areas that you've selected in your work zones. If you select your whole zoo or an area of your zoo, they will patrol this area and perform their job. Now you can assign any unassigned staff to the correct work zone. And your staff should start working in their jobs. That's right, run. Your staff are going to move the animals from the Animal Trade Center to quarantine as we've instructed them to. However, I didn't connect the pass correctly, which is why they're doing a strange runaround, and I'll fix this using the pathing tool. Now once they're in, you'll need to wait for them to pass quarantine. You can fast forward time by using the arrows in the bottom right hand side of the screen. Note that there are three speed modes and you alternate between them by left clicking. Once they've passed their quarantine, you'll see a quarantine pass ready to leave icon appear. If you click on this, you'll be directed to quarantine and here you can select both your animals, click move and then click the habitat you wish to move them to. If you guys have found this video helpful so far, please give it a thumbs up and hopefully it can reach other zoo creators in need.
Now you've successfully moved your animals to your zoo. Woohoo! Your animals have a certain number of needs in order to be happy, and you can see these by clicking your animal. In the terrain tab, we can see that the terrain distribution is not correct for this type of animal, so we're going to need to paint it. If you go into the terrain tab, you can select painting, and select the terrain type you wish to add more of. You can adjust the size and intensity of your brush. What I like to do is paint with 100% intensity and then use a 30 or 40% intensity of a different terrain type to blend it in a little bit. You need to make sure that all of the sliders are within the correct zones. Once they're in the correct zones, they'll go green. The next thing your animals require is plants. If you select the environment tab, you'll be able to see the type of plant coverage that they require. The Nile monitors don't require anything, but I think we should put in a little bit. You can also see the continent and the biomes that these animals like the plants from. You can filter these in the nature tab so you only see these plant types. You can adjust the height of any item by holding down shift, you can adjust its orientation by pressing Z, and you can move it with greater control by pressing X. This will give you three axes to move your items along. If you press X again, you'll be able to rotate the item along three axes. Pressing X again will allow you to flip between these two options. If we select a plant type that's not suitable for our animal, they'll tell us and we can easily remove it. These guys seem to like banana palms, so I'm just going to put a few of these in here. I'm also going to add some common reeds to the waterline to make it look a little bit more interesting. You can see that our animals really need enrichment, but unfortunately we don't have any. In order to get enrichment, you need to research it. If you go into the zoo tab, you can select vet research and drag your vet onto the animal you wish to research. Once they've completed their research, you'll have level one research for this animal. This will reward you with toys or food or fun facts or many other options. If you leave your vet on this animal, they'll continue to research it until they've finished all the levels. But if vets are moved off an animal to another animal, they'll just pause their research. Your animals also need food and drink. If you go into the habitat tab, you can select food and drink and filter the species you have. In this case, our Nile monitor can easily drink from the water supply we have, as we've filtered it properly with our water pumping station. But the food tray will enable our keeper to place all their food in one location. 
This is handy for our guests as we can place it near an area that we want our guests to see. At the minute our habitat doesn't have any glass barriers. If we edit the barrier, we can select the glass window option to create a nice glass window for our guests to look through. If you select the heat map again and click the water tab at the top, you can see the reach of our water pumping station. Only some of your water needs to be within this radius in order for the water to be filtered, so don't worry if some of it's sticking out. This means that the water's clean for our animals and they can easily drink from it without getting sick. You can also select the power option to see which of your buildings are contained within the power radius you have. This building doesn't require power. Your zoo entrance will act as your initial power generator. Your animals also require shelter, and most animals will need hard cover over their head and then a bedding option for them to sleep on. You can select a number of pre-built shelters, or you can build your own using the construction pieces. The NAR monitors are aquatic, so they can use the jetty bedding. I think this looks okay, but I'm going to make it a little bit more interesting and build it myself. In order to check that your animals can access all areas of their habitat, click the animal, click heat maps, and then click the habitat tab. This will show you the areas highlighted blue that your animals can access. The next important thing to cover is education and donation bins. Your guests need to be educated on your animals, and this requires power, so you need to make sure you're placing education within the power radius. I'm going to build a path around our habitat to give our guests a better view. In the settings tab you can select the snap alongside barriers option. This will make sure your paths follow the line of your barriers. Although the curves I've built in make this quite difficult. So in order to stop my path automatically connecting, I'm holding the control key down. Donation bins bring in a lot of money for your zoos. You can find these in the Facilities tab under Guest Facilities. You want to place your donation bins at areas where your guests are going to gather. The more you educate your guests, the more they'll donate. You can also change the colour of your donation bins. Guest education boards can be found in the facilities tab. You want to place these at areas where your guests are going to gather.
These will educate your guests on the animals in the habitat, but remember to link them to the habitat they're on by clicking them and selecting the animal you wish them to display. Another great way to get your guests to view your animals is through viewing areas. Here we're going to make a viewing area by building a small platform. To build the path up, hit the U key. If you hit this twice, it will become stairs. If you hit it once, it will be a ramp. You can also drop the path by pressing J. Barriers will automatically try to connect, so it's easier to build from both sides and then connect the middle. You can select the railing on Elevated on the Settings tab. This will add railings to your elevated paths.
Now when you're starting out, you're also going to need some exhibit animals, as these are very cheap to maintain and can still bring in a lot of guests. To find the exhibits, go into the Facilities tab and click Small Animal Exhibits. These buildings have four sides that guests can see your animals from. Here we're only going to use three. To get exhibit animals, click the Exhibit Trading tab and select the animals you wish to buy, just as in the Animal Trading tab. Exhibit animals only have two genes. When you wish to add them to your exhibits, click the Exhibit Animal Storage tab and Send to Zoo and then click the exhibit you wish to put them in. These will be moved instantly. To make your animals happy, you need to adjust the layout and the climate of your exhibit. The layout can be unlocked with research, but the climate can be adjusted at any time. For the climate, you want to make sure that the temperature and humidity are within the animal's preferred ranges. Change this by moving the slider. and remember to add them to your Keeper Work Zones. Your exhibits also need education. In the Facilities tab, you can find the Exhibit Education Boards. These act as the habitat boards for your exhibits. And don't forget to put donation bins in. Your guests have needs, and these need to be met for them to have a great time at your zoo. You can find these by clicking any guest. You can also see their history of where they've been, their current thoughts, their guest information, their finances for their group, and the information about their group, including how long they've been in your zoo and their group type. You can also find information about your guests by clicking the Guests tab within the Zoo menu. This will show you what all of your guests currently think about your zoo. If your guests think your ticket prices are too cheap, adjust these in the Zoo menu. Your guests are going to need facilities to meet their needs, especially food and drink. Here I'm using the path tool to make sure that my guest facilities line up with my entrance. To place guest facilities, click facilities and then click guest facilities. Here you'll have all the guest facilities you have unlocked. You can unlock more through your mechanics research. At the front of your zoo, I recommend placing an information centre and a loony balloons. The information centre will sell audio tours and umbrellas while the loony balloons will sell balloons to children. I would also recommend you place a cheap beef and a gulpy soda to meet their food and drink needs.
Here I'm going to create a small park area by using the Align to Grid option and selecting the path I've already built. Now I'm going to place park benches by clicking the facilities and then selecting the bench option I want. It's a good idea to place other benches around your zoo when it gets a little bit bigger because guests will get tired from walking too far. You will also need to place bins around your zoo to avoid litter. This will really help your caretakers out. If litter builds up in your zoo, guests will find it disgusting and won't want to stay. When you place guest facilities, you automatically hire a vendor for each facility. You'll need to make a work zone for these vendors that includes the staff building for them to rest in. If you wish, you can hire more vendors in the staff menu. Now our remaining cash at this point is £3,525.28, which means that we spent roughly £36,474.72, although our zoo has been running a little bit, so we have been earning a little bit of money. The point is though, at this point our zoo is earning money, so we don't have to worry about going bankrupt. Now, once we've earned a little bit more money, we can add some decoration to our zoo. 